How's everybody tonight? I bless and I leave flavored. Praise God. God is good all the time. Even when we're bonehead, Amen. he's still faithful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Welcome to the next year. <laughs> I have a message from the Lord. And I didn't come on no camel. <laughs> Glory. Would you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2? <laughs> I'm excited about the things that are about to happen and be released and unleashed because God is faithful amen God is faithful hallelujah in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, in the plan that's in Christ Jesus that he brought us. Be strong in it. Be strong in the plan. Turn to your neighbor and say, be strong in the plan. Turn to your other neighbor and say, be strong in the plan. In verse 2, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will who will be able to teach others also. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you're called to be a teacher. Hmm. Verse 3. You therefore must endure. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to endure. <laughs> hardship. <laughs> you therefore must endure hardship as a what? A good soldier of Jesus Christ. Not a bad soldier. A good one. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. <laughs> As the world burns. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also if anyone competes in athletics. He is not crowned unless he competes according to the what? The rules. Now, there's something about athletics in competition. When people are in athletics, everybody loves to compete. That's what it's about. It's a compete organization. But there's something that happens when a person competes. Everyone that competes must get a second wind. They got to get a what? Second wind. When that second wind kicks in, it's like nitro. And if that second wind doesn't kick in, that person dies out. Can't finish. Can't run the race. Even in the spirit, we must have a second wind. And it is the wind of God. That second wind that comes. Let's go a little further. Hallelujah. In verse 6, the hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, may the Lord give you what? Understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David, when raised from the dead, according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Sometimes you need a second wind in worship. In fact, that's what you look for to get to the next level. It's the breath of God that comes. You know, when you start, it's like you got to kind of like, Force yourself, you know? Yes. And then all of a sudden that song kicks in and poo, here comes second wind. Yes. And then you know what? 
another win. And the increasing second win comes more and more. And the next thing you know, you're connected. And you're just flowing and you're just praising and you're worshiping and you don't even want to stop and you just want to tell God how much you love him. And you're actually enjoying the love of God. You're enjoying it. In verse 11, this is a faithful saying, if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Hello. Very important. If you deny him, he'll deny you. You know, so many people are waiting for something from God. And because they're denying God. Now, I want you to understand something about denying God. It means you're not doing as well. That's denying him. You're not submitting to his authority. That's denying him. You're not resisting the devil. That's denying him. And when you deny him, he will deny you from receiving what is due you. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So we're to be strong. We're to be in the plan of God. We're to be able to teach the plan of God. We're to be able to endure all attacks of temptations. And we're to compete according to the rules of righteousness. The rules of righteousness. We're to die to ourselves so that we can endure. We're to deny ourselves and we're to become faithful. But as athletes have a phrase called second wind, so you and I must. Again, it's reboot, refresh, re energize, reconnect to get into position to overcome. Many times people don't get that second wind. They're not doing something that's not refreshing them and filling them, and they can't get in a position to overcome, and they become overcome. See, in this, in other words, when the attack comes, you don't call the devil names. When the attack comes, you don't flesh out, you don't react. You use the weapons of God. Because nothing else is going to do anything. And this is the area where we begin to grow and mature. Where we're using the weapons of God. We're not getting in a cycle of react. We're getting in the response to overcome. Just like Jesus did. But if you're still fighting for your life, you will react. I've never seen a dead man react. You can kick them, do anything you want, and they don't move because they're dead to self. And that's how you and I are supposed to be. In other words, we call that reaching the le master's level of death, the third level of death. Is everybody okay? The second wind is known as the wind of revival. It's known as the wind of what? Revival. See, one of the things that God checks us out for is to see if we're serious. Are you serious? Are you serious in worship? Are you serious in praise? Are you serious in study? Are you serious in the counsel of the Spirit? Are you serious? Is everything of kingdom business priority to every other business? Are you actually able to teach everything you learn? Well, if you don't take notes, you can't teach it. Amen. See, God checks everything. Everything. I remember going when I first got saved. Every time I'd go to the service, the Lord asked me something. He said, what would you do, guy? He would rebuke me. Why aren't, why aren't you taking notes? I would take notes. I don't care where I go, I take notes. Because there's something I can always pick up. I don't care if I've heard the same message over and over. 
See, there's the test that God tests us, how much you will worship him. When you decide to quit, when do you start drifting? La, 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 la. It's like people turn their back on God when they worship. I remember one day there was a guy in service. We were worshiping. He picked up his Bible. I went over and took the Bible out of his hand and threw it. I said, don't you ever interrupt my father again. God never interrupts himself. That's offensive to my Lord. When people start picking up their Bible when it's worship time. That is the interference of the power of darkness. That's the voice of the stranger that takes that person out of position. See, there's a time for Bible study. There's a time for worship. There's a time for praise. And God has control of all the times. But when we reject those times, we deny him. And when we deny him, he'll deny us. Amen? Ezekiel 37. In verse 1, Ezekiel 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. Everyone say dry. When a person is dry, they are lukewarm. And they're lukewarm because they're not serious enough. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord, you know. And again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Breath is God's wind. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I prophesied there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. And indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over. But there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain. That they may what? Live. What was he prophesying for the second wind? So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet as a what? An exceedingly great army. Believe me, the army of the Lord maintains the second wind. Hallelujah. And he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up. From your graves. And I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. The four winds of the breath of God that brings life refreshing, it brings strength, is here. I'm going to tell you it's here. It is a release of 2019. It is the second wind of revival. It will revive those who are dead in spirit and bring life to their spirit. 
We are going to enter the largest beginning of the harvest the world has ever seen. Because God will release the second wind. In Numbers 11, In verse 31, Numbers 11, verse 31. Now wind went out from the Lord. Where did it come from? The Lord. And it brought quail from the sea and left them fluttering near the camp about a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp and about two cubits above the surface of the ground. And the people stayed up all that day and all night and all the next day and gathered the quail. He who gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. So again, this was called the wind of provision. There's a wind of provision. In Ezekiel 5. We are about to enter a time of release of tremendous provision. But if you're not in position, you'll miss it. Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 5. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Thus says the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set her in the midst of the nations and the countries all around her. She has rebelled against my judgments by doing wickedness more than the nations and against my statutes more than the countries that are all around her. For they have refused my judgments and they have walked, not walked in my statutes. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have multiplied disobedience more than the nations that are all around you, have not walked in my statutes nor kept my judgments, nor even done according to the judgments of the nations that are all around you. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Indeed, I, even I, am against you, and will execute judgments in your midst in the sight of the nations. And I will do among you what I have never done, and the like of which I never will do again because of all your abominations. Therefore, fathers shall eat their sons in your midst, and sons shall eat their fathers, and I will execute judgments among you, and all of you who remain I will scatter to all the what? Winds. This is called the wind of judgment. Hallelujah. This is the wind of judgment in Mark 13. How I many you know people are eating people these days? People are eating children. It sounds sick, but it's definitely evil, isn't it? Mark 13. There was a gentleman that... Um, went to hell and he gave the testimony as the Lord allowed him to come back and he said when he was in hell that he saw such torment and people were in such torment that they never could compose themselves that their flesh would fall off and then come back on 
that some of them were eating their own flesh, literally eating their own flesh. And when they would eat away at their own flesh, it would grow right back and they would eat it and constantly eat it because they were drinkers of blood. Tremendous. There were people that were committed there crying out that had committed perjury, all kinds of evil sin. And this guy was explaining everything about it. He was freaked out. And the Lord said something to him. He said, I've spared you from hell. But his whole, the whole thing was this guy says, wait a minute, he was a preacher. He says, I don't understand this, Lord. What have I done wrong? He said, you've held bitterness towards your wife. He said, you should be here. He said, I didn't know I held this bitterness towards my wife. My wife. He said, you do hold bitterness towards your wife. You know he repented. <laughs> I mean, hell was one step away. <laughs> but he didn't realize that there was that bitterness that he held against his wife. Bitterness will send you to hell. Oh, hallelujah. Mark 13, 24. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the what? Four winds from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. In other words, these are the angels, actually are winds of God, that they will go to gather. This is the wind of gathering. Second Kings chapter 2. No, I want you to know that it's also vice versa if you hold bitterness towards your husband. <laughs> so, you know, if you hold bitter bitterness towards anyone, amen, you die in that condition. You go and cook. Verse 9. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what may I do for you before I am taken away from you. Elijah said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. I want you to grab hold of something. This is powerful because he said, if you see it. How many of y'all know that's called maintaining focus? That's where the enemy loves to move people out of focus. They start losing focus in worship. They start losing focus in all kinds of things. That is the ploy of the enemy. Why? So you miss what God is trying to get you. Do you ever see anybody play baseball or football or whatever? I know when I played many sports, if I was on defense, and somebody was getting ready to catch a ball, he'd go up to him and go, yeah! <laughs> Scream and try and get their attention or try to confuse them so, or freak them out. Why? So they lose focus and they get hit with the ball or they don't catch it. Hello? <laughs> Praise God. Verse 11. <laughs> So that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to distract you. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a what? Whirlwind into heaven. That is called the wind of God. That is the whirlwind of the rapture. That is going to be the third win that will come. 
There will be three winds that will come. We are in the second one right now. And Elijah saw it and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more, and he took the hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. And he also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and he struck the water and said, Where is the God of Elijah? And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. <laughs> there was the wind, the whirlwind of the rapture. In Revelation 7, Revelation 7. Verse 1. And these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the what? Four winds of the earth. These are the angels of the wind. That the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have what? Sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. This is the whirlwind. The angels of the wind, in other, in other words, these were the, this was the wind of destruction coming to the unsealed. Unsealed. Now, can you lose the seal? Yes. In Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1, verse 20. Angels of the wind of destruction coming to the unsealed. In other words, those that are not sealed will be exposed, won't they? That's all a part of the second wind. In verse 20, wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the chief uh, concourses at the openings of the gates in the city. She speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you, because I have called and you refuse I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded because you disdain all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a what? Storm. Is there always a wind in the storm? And your destruction comes like a what? Whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then you will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is honor, respect, and reverence. You know, people wouldn't do so many goofy things if they feared God. But... If you're not filled, dressed, and possessed with the Spirit of God, you don't carry the fear of the Lord. People just say and do whatever they think and want. Verse 30. They would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them and the com. Complacency of fools will destroy them. 
But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. I mean, there's the answer. Whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. The whirlwind of destruction, rejection is coming to individuals because they reject knowledge, counsel, wisdom. They refuse to hear and open their hearts. And what happens is it brings unsealing to individuals. It brings a unsealing. How many of you know God will lift his hand? When God lifts his hand from a person, it's unsealing. It says, um, just what, um, when I went astray is when I was afflicted. Why? Because God lifted his hand. Nobody can be afflicted without when God's hand is there. It's impossible. But when his hand is not there, affliction comes. Proverbs 10. Ten twenty-three. Ooh, actually, I like twenty-two. Ten twenty-two is just for you. <laughs> Hallelujah! Are we all there? The blessing of the Lord makes one what rich, and He adds no sour with it. Because he knows a person isn't going to do something stupid. To do evil is like sport to a fool. But a man of understanding has wisdom. The fear of the wicked will come upon him. And the desire of the righteous will be granted. When the whirlwind passes by, the wicked is what? No more. Whoa. But the righteous has an everlasting Foundation. So this is the whirlwind of exposure to remove the wicked. That's a part of the second wind we're in. In Jeremiah 23. Is everybody there? In verse 18. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard his word? Who has marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, a violent whirlwind. It will fall violently on the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it perfectly. Are we in the latter days? That's why the understanding is here now. We are understanding right now that we have entered the second wind, the second whirlwind, which will expose more. It's going to judge more, but it's going to release more provision than before. It will be an expression of the early and latter rain coming together. The whirlwind of the Lord of fury and violence in the latter days. As we enter 2019, understanding is released with wisdom. Psalm 37. Verse 34. Speak it. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree, yet he passed away and beheld. Behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless 
man, that means seal, and observe the upright. For the future of that man is peace, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they do what? They trust the Lord. He says, wait on the Lord. Keep his ways because his salvation to the righteous is available. He will deliver us from the wicked. He will mark and seal the blameless man because they trust him. That's why we've got to have more trust in him than yourself. I do not trust myself. I trust him. In 1 John chapter 3. So when somebody says, you trust me, be careful. <laughs> but when they say trust him, that's cool. <laughs> Don't trust me, trust him. 1 John 3. Sounds like the devil. Trust me. Verse 7. Little children, no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. And this is the children of God, and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Wow. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother, and why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Revival many times comes from chaos and destruction because it happens to get their attention. <laughs> in other words, it puts them in a state of, ah, I need God. And the cries for God to bring refreshing, to bring the cries of God to bring restoration, to guys, the cries to God to bring reconciliation or reconnection, Again, these areas of chaos and destruction many times will bring revival, but it will also expose the children of God and the children of the devil. In our time, hatred will increase and love of many will grow cold. And to maintain God's love can only be done by maintaining his presence and staying filled with his presence and glory. Amen? Because many people can sway in that arena and begin to hate. And Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6. You know, the word says that we hate sin and love the brethren. Six sixteen. Matthew six verse sixteen. I think that's it. Oh yeah. 
Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to, to men to be fasting. And surely I say to you, they will have their reward, an empty stomach. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is secret place, your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, where Thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, in other words, what you're putting in front of your eyes is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. What's he talking about? Light and darkness. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. And he brings something else up. He says, you cannot serve God in money. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field which today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these. But first seek what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for today is its own trouble. Hallelujah. In other words, in this period of time, God is, gonna, is asking us, are we going to serve him or money? There's great wealth going to be released. You know, when God reigns wealth, it goes on the righteous and the wicked. Amen? That's why he says, don't envy. Don't envy those who prosper. In 1 Timothy chapter 6. And then one more scripture. And then I will read the word of, for 2019. First Timothy chapter 6. In verse 3. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which occur, accords with godliness, he is proud knowing nothing and is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, from such withdraw yourselves. Now godliness with contentment is great gain, for it, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. 
For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man and woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life, to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession and many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ appeared, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potent the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. In the end time, there's distractions. There will be many. There will be influence that will draw many away into bondage. They will become unsealed in these last days. Many stay will, know, will stay and get stuck in the cycle of corruption, not able to outsow the flesh of reaction. They'll stay in that cycle because they're always reacting, not responding. When you at, react, you sow in the flesh and you reap corruption. There'll be many that cannot come out. They'll stay. You ever see those little mousies on the track? When they gerbils or whatever? <laughs> they can never go anywhere. They keep spinning and going out. That's what the word says. They're always learning and learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth because they can't break free because they're always sowing in the flesh. And that's the ploy of the enemy. If the enemy can keep you sowing in the flesh, you cannot advance. And I'm going to close at Luke 10. Luke 10, verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Man, they were happy. They were out there casting out devils. They were a good old time. They were demon hunters. And, he, and, and, the, and the Lord said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you what? Authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by no means hurt you. So we have authority and power. Over yourself, over demons, over everything. Over fear, anxiety, stress, anger, hatred. We have power over all of these. So we don't react, we respond. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, he says, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven in the book of life. Rejoice. That means you're sealed. Amen? Power and authority. Now, I'll read you the word that was given to me. In fact, you can find this, and we have some sheets of them on the Eternal Library. And under the newsletter. It's called Reality News. <laughs> it's a 2019 word. Thus says the Lord, this year will be my season. A year of rec recognition, reconciliation, and recompense. It has been said in the past prophecies that I was expected, what I was expected to do. But I say in those times, it was not fully understood and my people did not recognize the signs and began to lose faith and fall into captivity. The year of 2019 will be the second wind of three. I will release an increase of my anointing to my people to attack and to expose their strategies against the serpent. They will receive strength, prosperity, provision, encouragement, reconciliation, and vindication then my church will recognize it as I, the Lord, expressing my love for my people. 
Increase of wisdom and discernment will allow my people the advantage to overcome the flood of deception. The first one was released in 2016. It will continue to blow back and uncover the hidden evils of destruction and expose their hidden treasures attached to their agendas. My two-edged sword of justice and righteousness will execute my judgments and will expose a tree of false knowledge that has veiled many souls with lies and deception. I will unite my warriors and hold back my people that are attached to me from the snares, traps, and misleadings of evil influence. Those that have an ear toward me will receive a time of refreshing from my presence with revelations and dreams and visions. My ministries that are true to me, I will be true to them and provide the needed to support to fulfill their desired mission. Chaos and confusion will be the words of the world, but awesome and glory will be the words of my chosen. I'll expose those that defile my temple and contaminate my people. Again, I will kick over the tables of corruption, and my people will clean up the spoil. Those that have pierced me with unbelief and doubt will open their ears toward me, and I will invade the hearts of men at their weakest moments. I have come to set the captives free from the veil of Satan, and my warriors will be my sword. I will open the prison doors to my servants and those falsely accused. My gathering of souls will be great, extending the harvest of my creation. Many will turn to save their souls, and jealousy will rise against my people because of my hand of favor will be with them. I will split governments. I will split political parties. I will split the economy. I will split open, and I will split open all areas of religious organizations, and I will bring confusion in the stock market, and I will dismantle all lying imposters of self-exaltation in the media, internet, and co cooperations, and the bankers that exploit my people. Yes, I will split open all these areas and more for the world to see the true veil, the true evil that hides in darkness, that profanes my name and my children and they will choose to awaken or stay asleep. I will create a new awakening and unfold the paths of righteousness and justice. Many kingdoms will fall and new ones will arise, but I will hold back the evil powers for a period of time, gathering many to escape into my house and hide underneath the wings of my protection. Fear not for what you see or here because of the change in shifts of government, economy, and rise and falls of the political. For I am your government and your provider. This will be the year of reset. I will hold to my promises and covenant toward my people. I will reset the hearts and minds of many and cause panic to arise to those who do not know me. Draw near my children and let not the voice of deception or confusion mislead you. If this is my season, it is also yours. All paths lead to 2020. Be patient, for the third wind will come. Welcome to the second wind of revival. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed that's been imparted in us grow and bear fruit for your glory. Keep us positioned. that We may continue to catch the anointing and be refreshed and prepared as we enter this new season, your season. As you said, if it's your season, it's our season. So let it come, Papa, and let us be a sign and wonder to this world and involved and engaged in the largest harvest mankind has ever seen in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.